Hey guys, I'm back again with another quick five questions. It's going to be a chemistry topic today and it's going to be the topic of chemical structures. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then I mean stuff like giant covalent, giant metallic, giant ionic and simple molecular substances. And those are the things I'm going to be asking you questions on today. So as always, I'll ask a question, pause this video, have a go answering it and then I'll tell you the perfect answer. So the first question is, what are the four types of chemical structure? And they are giant covalent structure, giant metallic structure, giant ionic structure, and simple covalent or simple molecular. They're both the same at the end. Next question is, give me three examples of giant covalent structures. And here you want to say diamond, graphite, and silicon dioxide. What element is diamond and graphite made from? And that's carbon. Next up, I want to know some examples of giant ionic substances. And this is quite a tricky question because it basically it's a metal bonded to a non-metal, but you could have given sodium chloride as an example or magnesium oxide. They're both good examples. Give me examples of giant metallic structures. And pretty much you could pick any metal here. Just don't pick something like mercury because mercury is really weird because it's a liquid at room temperature. Give me some examples of simple covalent structures. Again, you've got lots of options, things like carbon dioxide or chlorine or methane or ammonia. These are all simple covalent structures and they're all gases at room temperature. So now we're going to have a look more closely at the properties that these different structures have. So let's start by looking at giant ionic structures. Why do giant ionic structures have such high massing points? And you need to say here because they have strong forces of attraction between oppositely charged ions and that these require a lot of energy to break. Why do giant covalent structures have such high melting points? And that's because they have, you must specify this, many strong covalent bonds which require a lot of energy to break. If you're talking about diamond, you can say that each carbon atom in diamond is bonded to four others, creating a giant tetrahedral structure. Graphite similarly has a very high melting point, but actually in graphite only three carbons are bonded, um, leaving a spare one. So the next obvious question is, why does graphite conduct electricity? And that's because only three of the carbon atoms are bonded, leaving a spare electron, which can carry the current. Why doesn't diamond conduct electricity? Well, that's because all the carbons are bonded, so there are no free electrons. Why do metals conduct electricity? And that's because they have delocalised electrons, which can carry the current. Why are ionic substances brittle? And let's first of all look at what the term brittle means. Remember brittle means that if you hit it, it breaks apart easily. The reason why ionic substances are brittle is because when you apply a force, the layers slide, meaning the ions of the same charge end up next to each other, and then they repel, so the whole structure breaks apart. Can't think of any more questions. What is an alloy? Well, an alloy is two or more different metals mixed together. Why do alloys tend to be much harder than pure metals? And that's because alloys contain metals of different sized ions, and those ions mean that those different sized ions mean that the layers can't slide over each other so easily. Let's look at simple molecular in more detail now. So why do simple molecular substances have such low melting points? And that's due to weakened molecular forces between the molecules, which are easy to break, so they require little energy to break. Now I'm going to come up with some questions which come up time and time again, um, and I want to show you how you're going to answer them. So one question, for example, would be, why does sodium chloride have such a high melting point, and why does methane have a low melting point? So what you want to do is break your answer into two, and this answer could actually potentially be worth six marks. So start by looking at sodium chloride, identify what kind of structure it is, and then talk more about it. So sodium chloride is a giant ionic structure, that's the first mark, meaning that it has strong forces of attraction between oppositely charged ions, requiring a lot of energy to break. Now we can look at methane, identify the kind of substance it is again. So methane is a simple covalent structure, or a simple molecular structure, with weak intermolecular forces, which do not require a lot of energy to break, and before you know it, you've formed your answer. Let's take another substance, for example. Why does diamond have such a high melting point? Why does ammonia have a low melting point? So let's start with ammonia, because that's more straightforward. The ammonia is a simple molecular substance 
with weakened molecular forces, which do not require lots of energy to break. Whereas diamond is a giant covalent structure made up of many strong covalent bonds because each carbon is bonded to four others, meaning that it requires a lot of energy to break. What does the term malleable mean? That means that an object can be hammered into shape, so things like metals are very malleable because the ions can easily slide. What does the term ductile mean? That means that a substance can be drawn into a wire, so again, metals tend to be ductile. Let's look at the electrical conductivity of giant ionic structures now. So, why do giant ionic structures conduct when molten? And the simple answer here, which you need to put, is that the ions are free to move. Hence, why don't ionic substances conduct when solid? And that's because the ions are not free to move. Sorry, I keep looking around because I'm like, are there any more questions? Right, nice quick video then. I think that's everything I wanted to say. Um, I really hope you found this video helpful. Come follow me on Snapchat if you're not already doing so because, to be honest, it's more about what I do outside of science um, rather than just talking about science all the time. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back soon with another video. Bye, guys.